Hey everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Gabe Morenzi, who's got his six best bets of the week. Gabe, we hope it goes better than Thursday Night Football. Yeah, well, it can't be any worse, as I'd rather listen to a Chelsea uh, Clinton book on tape uh, than go through what I went through uh, watching that football game again. And I tell you, I'm not looking forward to Monday night. Do I have to do a video uh, for Monday Night Football on Monday? I guess so, right? Uh, but fortunately, we've got some great games on Sunday. Let's start off with my Buffalo Bills. I believe we told you they were going to beat the Dallas Cowboys uh, last week. And, yeah, everyone's beating the Dallas Cowboys now. But that's irrelevant because we cashed on the money line and we cashed a six-and-a-half-point underdogs. And here we are once again, the Buffalo Bills not getting a ton of respect. I get it. Baltimore are a great football team. But Baltimore just laid five-and-a-half points on their home field to San Francisco and did not get the cover. The number was a little bit too high. Now they're laying more than five and a half on the road against the best team in the National Football League against the spread as the Buffalo Bills are 8-3-1 and one against the number. The Buffalo Bills are also 4-0-1 oh, against the number the last five times they've been listed as an underdog. Um, the last uh, four times the Buffalo Bills have been six-point underdogs uh, or more. Uh, they're also 4-0 uh, and oh against the spread. Long story short, the Buffalo Bills have been a great bet uh, this year. And as good as Baltimore have been, uh, Baltimore only 6-6 six and six against the spread, guys. Very similar football teams. Um, you know, Baltimore's offense is obviously more dynamic with Lamar Jackson. But Josh Allen, yeah, he can run the football too. Both defenses are going to sort of be used to what the other team is throwing at them. They practice against mobile quarterbacks. Interesting side note in this football game. It's been 20 years since Doug Flutie's returned to Buffalo, but Doug Flutie is the guest of honor uh, this week at the Buffalo Bills game. And, you know, we know about the magic that Doug Flutie brought uh, to the Buffalo Bills. There's something special going on right now in western uh, New York, and I think it continues on Sunday. As always, sprinkle on the money line if you're taking a home dog like this. Uh, the Buffalo Bills can win this game outright. Um, will they? We're going to give you the points right now. I think it's the safest bet. Take six. This this game's going to come right down to the freaking wire, man. Two evenly matched up football teams. Got to take the six points with the Buffalo Bills. Game's favorite team this week, same as his favorite bet. It's the Buffalo Bills at home. Flutie returns game. It's a big night. And you know what? I'm tired of people calling me a homer as well. Oh, of course, take the Bills. They're eight, three, and one against the spread. All right? You see, when you're the best... Yeah, you know, it's not being a homer. It's just being factual. Oh, he's betting on the Raptors again. Yeah, you mean the NBA champion, Toronto Raptors? Keep on hating, people. Keep on hating. Because nobody circles the wagons like the Buffalo Bills. The Ravens are going down, Gary. The Ravens are going down. Up next here on the Hurry Up, we get over to the Cincinnati Bengals, taking on their cross-state rivals, the Cleveland Browns. Bengals got Andy Dalton back. The defense looks better. They've been competitive here, Gabe. In fact, they won outright last week, and they do it again. I got to tell you, everything's great in the world again, man. My, the Bills are winning. Andy Dalton's back as the starter. His rightful place as the starting quarterback of the Cincinnati Bengals. And I'll be damned. You can say what you want about me. I can take it. Thick skin. Don't call out Andy Dalton. Andy Dalton, 21 and 10, and one against the spread in the month of December, Greg. Last week, Andy Dalton put money in our pocket. It's great to see you, Andy. Andy Dalton's like a relative you see at the holidays. Hey, Andy. And he's also like a relative that, you know, he's good to see you originally. And then after you see him uh, for a little while, it's like, oh, God, I don't want to see Andy Dalton for a long time uh, ever again. Uh, but the Browns can't be trusted to be laying points here, guys. One in seven, the last eight uh, times against the spread would have been favored by three or more points. Two and five against the spread when they're laying seven uh, or more. The Cincinnati Bengals have always been very, very good road dogs. And in fact, they're eight and two against the number of the last 10 times have gotten points on the road. I don't see any reason why we can't cash again. Oh, yeah, Cincinnati's also beaten Cleveland the last five times uh, they've gone there. Cleveland are just too shaky and flaky. Shake and bake with Andy Dalton. Happy holidays, Andy. Thanks for the memories. Let's cash another one. Tiger stripes cover the number. Give me the seven and a half points with the Bengals.
Nobody loses money for Gabe like Andy Dalton does. And we've seen so many of Gabe's videos explaining he'll never do it again. And here we are. No, no, he actually covers a lot. That's why I do it. I just get upset because I love him, Greg. <laughs> it's, I, I, it's passion, you know what I mean? It's like your family holidays. It's Thanks. Christmas time. Andy Dalton's back. He got the Bills into the playoffs a couple of years ago. All is right in the world when Gabe Morenci is betting on Andy Dalton. And this week, you should be too. Continuing on, let's get to the Miami Dolphins because there's nothing like betting against the New York Jets. Ryan Fitzpatrick against a Adam Gaze. The Dolphins are a five-and-a-half-point underdog in a game they very well could win outright, Gabe. Yeah, you wouldn't think uh, that I, you know, I'd be running to the window to bet on the Miami Dolphins, but here we are. <laughs> here we are, and it's a good thing. I'm going to be at the FanDuel Sportsbook at the Meadowlands on Sunday so I can run to the window and bet on the Miami Dolphins. As the New York Jets, these guys are money burners, man. All right, Willie Nelson might have stopped smoking weed as he announced this week, but it doesn't mean the Jets have stopped smoking money. All right, these guys torch it like Snoop Dogg. 3-11 their last 14 games. Uh, I think Sam Darnold's gotten mono uh, more times in his life uh, than he has beaten division opponents. He's got two wins against division opponents in his career. Yeah, great stuff. Second to coming at Joe Namath, right? I guarantee I'm going to beat the Miami Dolphins. Are you? Really? Dolphins have won five of six against Gang Green. All right? You bet on the New York Jets, you end up with Gang Green. Five of six. Give me Ryan Fitzpatrick, man. This guy's hot. One of the hottest teams in football right now. The Miami Dolphins, six and two against the spread in their last eight football games. Oh, but they're tanking. Yeah, yeah, they're tanking. They're covering every week. That's what they're doing. The only thing is tanking is your bank account if you're betting against these guys. Hard to believe I want Fitzpatrick over anybody, but I'd, I prefer uh, Fitz over Sam Darnold. Uh, let's not forget, too, the Dolphin players hate. Uh, it's actually something they have in common with the Jet players. They both don't like Adam Gase. <laughs> so when you have a case of, like, you know, the former team doesn't like the coach, and the guys that currently play for him don't like the coach. Yeah, we'll go with the team. Um, we'll go with the team that really uh, doesn't like him. And we're going to go with the Miami Dolphins uh, here. They're playing, uh, you know, loose football right now. That's the beautiful thing if you don't care. You can have fun. Ryan Fitzpatrick doesn't care. This guy's thrown seven interceptions in a football game before and gotten like a $12 uh, million six-year contract extension per year uh, type of deal. All right? The guy plays carefree football, and it's going to be carefree. And the Jets are like one of the million teams that he played for, right? And didn't you guys screw him over in his mind? Uh, everyone screwed Fitzpatrick over. All right, settle down, Fitz. You're lucky you've been in the league this long. Uh, but it doesn't mean my money's not going to be on you. Um, give me the fish. I miss Patrick the Dolphins, as you heard from Gabe, one of the hottest teams in the NFL, especially against the spread. They've been really good. The Jets have been really bad. The Miami oh, yeah, Dolphins. Bad. Let me just throw in, the Jets are the first team in NFL history to lose to two teams that are over seven and worse in the same year. Really bad's an understatement. And are you going to lay five and a half with that? Give no. me the fish. Give him the fish. Let's go over to the NFC South. The New Orleans Saints, good battle against here, the San Francisco 49ers. Saints are a home favorite, minus two and a half. They don't get the full three points here. This is a good game, a tough game, but it's one of your six best bets. How come? You know what? Um, to me, this is a short price as well. People aren't talking about just how good the New Orleans Saints actually are. They're an explosive football team, um, and they're a football team with a chip on their shoulder. They feel as if though they were wronged uh, last year, and they're on a straight-out freaking mission uh, right now to nail down home field advantage in the NFC playoffs. We all know how hard it is to win in the Superdome, and in fact, they're 17-3 and in their last 20 games. All right, uh, in the Superdome. They've won lat nine of their last ten. They're eight and two against the spread in their last ten football games. San Francisco were in a real battle last week in Baltimore. I mean, come on, guys. You're on the West Coast. You're going to Baltimore. You're going back to the West Coast. Now you have to go into Cajun uh, country. It's a very short number here. I, to me, this number should be four, four and a half. Put it this way. Why would the Ravens? You Are the Ravens that much better than the Saints? Really? So the Ravens are five and a half point favorites. If the Saints are two and a half point favorites. And the, the Niners just went through a grueling game in the pouring rain on the East Coast. They laid it all out there. Uh, we, have two, we have two teams going in different directions uh, right now. San Francisco have been really good, uh, but New Orleans have been great. And let's be real, San Francisco are just two and two in their last four football games. 
Um, the Niners are kind of front runners. They'll sort of bully you around. They're not a very good road team, and they don't win when they're underdogs. And in fact, they're one in eleven. Uh, Kyle Shanahan is one in eleven the last twelve times straight up. He's been listed as an underdog. I only have to lay two and a half points uh, here. Give me the New Orleans Saints in the Superdome. Who dat? Who dat? Saints win and cover. New Orleans Saints similar to the Baltimore Ravens, and one was a bigger favor than the other. Doesn't make sense to Gabe, which is why he's all over the New Orleans Saints this week, minus two and a half against San Francisco. The Saints, Greg, have put up 31 or more points in four of their last uh, six football games. I just don't see San Francisco being able to match this output uh, on the fast track in the Dome. Sunday Night Football, a battle in the NFC West. The Seattle Seahawks taking on the Los Angeles Rams. Rams got back some of their hype after last week's uh, bludgeoning of the Arizona Cardinals. Seahawks, oh, they're currently on top of the NFC, kind of quietly here as well. It's a tough game to pick. It's basically pick them. Where are you going, Gabe? Well, I tell you what, uh, and nobody's been riding the Seattle Seahawks like I have uh, this year. I had a season win total bet on them. I've been betting them pretty much on a weekly basis. And, I, you know, I, I can't tell you that um, I have slayed the odds maker this year. But I can tell you that there's a lot of weird numbers uh, this year in the National Football League that I just uh, haven't gotten. And Seattle, one of those teams that haven't gotten any respect, except in this spot. I, I think the Rams are the team here. Uh, listen, Seattle have been on a great run. Uh, but the Rams are a team that have always matched up really, really well against Pete Carroll and Russell Wilson. Now, we know about uh, – listen, we got to throw it out there. Last week, we kept on talking about – all. Oh, uh, Pete Carroll and Russell Wilson in prime time, in prime time. Wow, this isn't prime time. It's Sunday Night Football. The difference is Pete Carroll is 18-2 and two at home in prime time. They're still very good in prime time as a whole, uh, but, you know, the Rams have actually beaten the Seahawks three of the last four times that they played, and truth be told, they should have beaten them this year. Zerline missed a field goal that he normally would have made uh, blindfolded. Uh, so he actually missed a chip shot for him. It was like a 44-yarder. So it was actually somewhat of a surprise. The Rams, that would have been four straight wins against uh, Seattle. The Rams aren't dead yet. They got to track down the Minnesota Vikings, uh, but they have the pedigree to do it. They're as healthy as they have been on offense. And don't look now, but Todd Gurley actually got 25 touches, and it's starting to look like Todd Gurley again. Sean McVay, when asked, how come Todd Gurley hasn't gotten the ball more, he said, because I'm an idiot. And he said, I got to stop being an idiot and get the ball to Gurley more. Um, I expect them to get the ball to Gurley more, but the key is they have their wide receivers back, man. Robert Woods went off, had like a career-high 13 catches. They put up 34 points against Arizona. I think the Rams are going to be a tough out um, on the way out here in the final month of play. Rams uh, under Sean McVay, 11-4 and four straight up in division games, including 8-1 and one straight up and 7-2 and two against the spread from game 7 out. Uh, Greg, the uh, Rams played their best football in the month of December. And uh, in a January, unfortunately, didn't play well in February uh, last year. I like the Rams in this spot. And we should note, too, guys, the last four times that these two teams have played, freaking track meets, man. Like track mate, track meets. Three of the four have sailed way uh, over the number. I don't see anything different here. I think we're going to have a fun Sunday nighter. You know the way it goes. Uh, ESPN gets dealt like a crap hand, and we have boring football every Monday. And somehow these Sunday night games are really fun. Expect a fun Sunday nighter. Uh, interesting uh, tidbit here. Pete Carroll, of course, longtime coach of the USC Trojans. A lot of success there. Last time coaching in Los Angeles for Memorial Coliseum. All those notes add up to taking the Rams to win this one outright, to take the over with the Seahawks and Los Angeles. It should be a fun game. As Gabe said, Sunday night usually turns into a fun night. So enjoy this one and make sure you take the over. That's going to do it for us here on the Fan Duel. Hurry up. Gabe is ready. I'm ready. Are you ready? It should be a fun week 14 around the NFL. So for Gabe Morenci, I'm Greg Sussman. Enjoy the games and let the winners be yours.